Well, hello, my friends. So, today, this is going to be a fairly long video. It's entirely unscripted and basically, it's more or less the state of the channel where it is and where it's going, and also a bit of a follow up as to what happened to me and myself um, over last year. So, first things first. Um, I'm filming content for the next lot of videos into the following into SME. I've got the Universal Timer, which I've got to finish filming. I've got the Morse Code Trainer, the Electronic Dice, and the Monophonic Organ as the next lot of projects in the following into SME. I'm working on some more, I'm working on some old projects become new. So the first one is the Lyrebird Recreation Project. Now that's going to be a multi-part uh, multi-faceted project because of how big the project actually is. I'm also working on two other projects from the All Projects Become New. From the Electronics Australia magazine in 1983, there's the 8 channel uh, balance mixer, which I'll recreate uh, so people can build their own mixers because see, even to this day to buy them, they're like five, six, seven hundred dollars for a diesel one. This one you'll be able to build for a fraction of that price. The other project is the electronic roulette. Now, with mine, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do mine at least half the scale of a proper roulette wheel, but it will still have the basic electronics that does all the lights to say which number you've won, but I'm also going to do it with a proper table so you, you could actually use it to say play a bit of roulette at home. So that's what's pretty much coming up in, over the next coming weeks. Now, um, a bit about myself. So, as you know, my name's Pop, and obviously we're in my engineering space here, <laughs> and I primarily do like to do electronics. Now, what not, not a lot of people know about me is that I have autism. I was diagnosed with autism when I was 16 years of age, and I've been living with it ever since, obviously once I knew what was going on. It was originally diagnosed as Asperger's Syndrome, but now it's referred to as part of the autism spectrum. Now, my autism is what gives me my um, focus when it comes towards electronics and things that I enjoy. But also too, it unfortunately also doesn't exactly help me out either because with my autism, I interact with people very differently. I take things in very differently. So my ability to sometimes hold down a job becomes extremely difficult because I have a hard time, not so much doing the work, it's the people I have to interact with. Uh, basically, um, it's very difficult for me to handle interpersonal relationships and interaction with co-workers. And unfortunately in my case, because I've been um, bullied in one form or another over the last 20 plus years, um, I've unfortunately developed a negative side to my autism. So basically in the advert when I get um, excessively stressed out due to interactions with people and people and some people just not understanding what's going on and ultimately not being in a demeanor that will work out favorably, they don't understand I take things differently and end up being quite hostile towards me and there's really nothing I can do about it. Um, it's this um, inability to sometimes interact with others that has ultimately led, led to me losing a number of jobs uh, because people just don't understand that I take things in differently, I see things differently. Now, I've been in a few workplaces where they've been understanding of someone with autism, but unfortunately in my case, um, even though um, they've been understanding, um, for some reason or another, they will let me work for the contract that I'm at on and they, don't, they won't renew it. And I found that tends to be the case almost anywhere I go. They say, and whenever you talk to people who, where I've worked, they say I do great work, I do excellent stuff, but they don't give a reason as to why my contract was continued. Now, last year, I was lucky enough to get a full-time job in the mining sector. Um, I was actually very happy to hear that they claimed that they would be understanding of those with autism or as they call them, neurodiverse. But my experience on the other hand was anything but. 
Now, in my case, because I'm in South Australia, uh, the main mining employer here is BHP. Now, I got a job at Olympic Dam, I love the work, it gave me the income to set this place up. You know, it, it actually helped me get this channel started. But what ended up happening though was that some of my coworkers didn't understand me. I didn't tell them I had autism because I detected that they would take, they would view it in a negative way. Um, one thing that was bothering my coworkers was they, they didn't like it how quickly I was learning things. And they themselves um, encouraged me to um, hold back. And naive me trying to fit in, I decided to accept what they were doing. But one of my coworkers, obviously, like almost everywhere I've been, um, didn't like it that I was different and how I um, perceived things differently and ultimately engaged in um, verbal and psychological um, bullying of me. And I did my best to keep my distance from him, but this resulted in me having a, an event at work at Olympic Dam. And as a result, I ended up on um, work cover. So, I, you know, I then used that time to get the first few channels out. Like when, if you look at the so-called setup of my space um, videos, um, a lot of that was done during my, my recovery from the bullying that occurred at Olympic Dam. That's when I was recovering. Now, I found out then that the bully who had actually um, harmed me and affected the way I did, affected my work had since been uh, let go. So I attempted to return to work. I to be basically barred and blocked. Basically I was just never, I was not allowed to return to work even though I had done nothing wrong except be a victim of uh, bullying. And because I chose to have myself cleared to return to work, I also lost the ink, I lost the unsupported, the supported income that I had at the time, because I wasn't, and yeah, so basically I was still continuing to receive um, medical help for what had occurred. But I was just basically given no reason as to why I wasn't allowed back, yet um, no one, um, had anything bad to say about me. They said I did excellent work, I did a really good job, I was, you know, but they didn't let me back. So then for basically, um, in the prevailing months, I pretty much struggled from day to day. I was still trying to make these videos, but they slowed up because I obviously didn't have the income. And this is only a small channel at the moment. I then found a job at another BHP site, Prominent Hill. And that got off to a good start. But, again, due to my autism, a situation occurred and I only found myself um, out of work again. And again, the situation occurred as a result of the negative side of my autism um, because it was more or less what, it was what was left over from what happened to me at Olympic Dam. I obviously hadn't fully recovered from the um, from the incident, but I still needed income um, because of it. But what makes me uh, very angry is BHP claims that they are happy to support people who are neurodiverse and are more than happy to basically provide the support when required. When I decide to ask for this support, I didn't get any. There was um, no support forthcoming and people were very good at hiding. The people who made the decisions to not let me return to work even though I had done nothing wrong so I ended up being a victim twice over. They were very good at hiding who they were. So the, pe the people at Olympic Dam who made the decision that I was never to return 
made very made it very clear that they didn't want me to know who they were because um, although a BHP has a service called Ethics Point, you need to know who the person is for to actually get any justice. And in my case, the person went out of their way to hide who they were so that I couldn't actually access. So these, this person went out of their way to make sure they, their identity wasn't known. So I'm, although I put the complaint in, nothing could be done because I needed to know who it was who had made this decision. And when they go to great lengths to hide who they are, it makes it very hard for me. So as a result, like I said, I'm a, I'm a victim twice. So at first I was a victim of a bullying of a co-worker who eventually um, got let go. And then I ended up becoming a victim of the management of this area because they didn't want someone who basically obviously was autistic and obviously had to be dealt with in a different way. So I was basically, um, as I would put it, I felt like I was ostracized because of my autism. So, and this was at a bit, this was at Olympic Dam. You know, I've been wanting to work at this, I've been wanting to work at Olympic Dam for the last 10 years. I've been wanting, I, I made a decision in my late 20s, early 30s, I wanted to work there. And I did, and then because I couldn't handle the bullying from a coworker, and because I was trying to fit in, I gave in to a lot of things, like even to my coworkers suggesting I should hold myself back. Um, all in the interest because I wanted to fit in with my colleagues. Uh, I didn't want to be, um, I didn't want to rock the apple cart. I didn't want to, you know, cause problems. Um, then the prominent hill, Basically, an incident occurred uh, where basically my stress levels were sent through the roof and things happened because, you know, with me having my autism, it was discovered many years earlier. If my stress levels were, were put through the roof through interacting with people and generally they end up being hostile interactions, I obviously have been told I lose rationality and my ability to interact is basically it, not like dealing with a normal person, but obviously no one knew about this, even though this time I made the effort to let my employer know that I had autism. But no, um, one person wrote in a rather egregious email about me. Uh, I was never I was never made privy to the contents of said email and based on the testimony of one person's point of view uh, a decision was basically made to prevent me from returning to that role and now I'm here still struggling to make ends meet um, I've got this YouTube channel but with all the other stresses I've been under, it's been hard to stay focused on the work. Um, I need to get back to work on the live recreation project because I've put a lot of work into it. Um, but it's a very large project and requires a lot of work on my part. And I need to get myself right in the head, but I also need to be able to try and get back to releasing content. So. The reason I'm doing this video is I want to let people know what projects I've got in the pipeline, what's going to be content released, but also to let people know about the battle I'm having at the moment, um, so that people actually understand the situation I'm in. But it's also more or less um, to, to call out BHP on claiming to support people with autism, yet me, someone who basically decide to take a chance and accept that they were accepting, decide to seek employment with them, only to find that basically people go out, some of the people that you, in, you engage with go out of their way to prevent you from accessing said uh, systems. So I'm now in a position again where I am struggling to make ends meet. Um, 
When I did have a little bit of an income that came in from working at Prominent Hill, I used it to buy the stuff that I needed to start working on the next little Funway and SME videos. So I'm in the middle of filming those. I'm currently filming the Universal Time video and the Morse code trainer video. I've yet to do the electronic dice and monophonic organ. I've got all the boards made. Um, PCBYA have been absolutely um, superb in this regard. Plus, I've got another video coming up with the Filamax factory with the new water bath being made. I had a CNC part made by PCBYA, and you'll be able to see that when I go to assemble it on, in the video. But, um, yeah. Now, I am going to eventually set up a website, but for the time being, if you want to keep track of, um, you know, what's going on between videos, you can either go to Core Electronics um, Forum in the link in the description below, or to Element 14. Um, the guys at Core are a lot more um, supportive of my efforts. And I might try and see if they'll let me have a, um, a category. A, 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 I'll see if they'll let me post a lot more regular updates about my channel on Core's, Core's um, so, um, forums. But um, as it stands, I've got to get back to work on doing filming. And I just want people to know, understand the troubles I'm having now. If you feel as though that I'm producing good content, I have set up a Patreon in case you want to support me. It will definitely go, if people do contribute, it will go a long way. Not to mention it will help me um, pay off the camera that I'm using to record this on because when I bought this camera, although I put it onto finance, I had the job at Prominent Hill at the time. Um, now I don't, so I'm gonna to struggle to pay it off. So if people decide you know, get onto my Patreon and start supporting my efforts, I'll be eternally grateful. Um, and the other reason why I'm trying to do more on this channel now is because I don't see myself getting another job anytime soon. Because um, I have left a few comments on BHP's Facebook uh, regarding, you know, what happened to me, and they've just ignored it. They've just been radio silent. I'm considering re reaching out to the state government because apparently they claim they have a minister for autism, but. From what I've got, the impression I've got, they're mainly focusing towards um, young South Australians, not someone who's in their early 40s. But to end, basically, pretty much anything I've tried working on, like when I tried doing electronics at TAFE back in 2003, 2004, I was doing really well, I was doing okay, and then of course, basically, again, a group of um, students in the class who were your atypical high school bullies uh, basically saw I was an easy target, picked on me, bullied me, damaged my work, um, you know, put me under a lot of stress so I couldn't focus on my studies and I ultimately failed a few of my subjects. And then ultimately I gave up on my electronics at that time because it was no longer enjoyable, it was basically when I went to class, it was pretty much, um, I was thinking, am I going to be experiencing another day of torment or was I going to be learning the stuff that I love? And oddly in the end, I gave up on it because um, I just, I just didn't want to be um, bullied because I was there to learn and to enjoy electronics, not to be someone's plaything. I did approach the lecturers at the TAFE and, um, I did, and I did point out what was going on. They found out that the students who committed the um, bullying and they turned around and spoke to them like grown adults and these hooligans weren't functioning like adults. They were literally children. They had not grown up. They had not realised now they're considered an adult and they should behave appropriately. Um, and the college try to dip, rational, rationalize with these bullies like grown men, but in reporting them, all it ended up doing was 
stepping up the bullying. It, they just increased what they did. And it only ended in me leaving, um, leaving uh, what we call TAFE. And I have not completed my electronic studies. So, yeah, due to the, I, I gave up on it because I just didn't want to be bullied anymore. And the systems that were supposed to be in place to protect you from bullying weren't working. Um, basically, they, instead of, instead of actually dealing with the problem in a very different way, they just dealt with them like they would, like, adults. But that didn't work with these with these people because you couldn't treat them like adults, basically. And probably what ended up happening, they just learnt to hide what they were doing, and they basically utilised the systems that were there to try and get access to my work. Because some of the stuff we did at TAFE was like ongoing work that was then kept in like a pigeonhole um, in your classroom. And all they did was they found a way to get access to my stuff and basically would do it where they couldn't be caught. I didn't, I didn't find out once I went to class, um, I would find the work I'd been working on all of a sudden had disappeared. So, yeah. And then, um, even some workplaces I went to, I would initially fit in, but then again, for some reason, I'd end up being targeted by someone who saw me as an easy target and I would end up um, being someone's target for bullying just because I did things differently because, and again that was due to my autism and again I um, kept this for myself or I just didn't interact with them to try and get away from the problem or I brought it up and basically they pretty much turned around and denied what they'd done and technically said I was being a liar and stuff like that, which um, I wasn't. And again, I, uh, I I left a couple of places where I was employed and there's been a few other, pl few other places where I worked. And More or less because people didn't understand that, you know, people with autism think differently. I managed to end up finding workplaces basically where they didn't understand and I was treated like a normal person and I fell foul of um, other people's decisions and they were making base they were basing decisions based on me being Normal. So, yeah, it's just been really hard. And I started, and it was this year, as a way to try and recover from what happened at Olympic Dam back in April. Um, I got back in my electronics, which is why I ended up signing the channel. And I started to realize, again, why I enjoy electronics so much and it and the reasoning behind for doing the channel basically. But being under so much stress and under financial much strain and stuff like that, it's been very difficult to focus on the channel. So All I'm asking is that, you know, you give me the, give me a chance, subscribe to my channel, you'll see the content come through. Um, you can even, like I said, you can go to the core forums where I'll be, where I will post regularly as to updates that I've done and stuff like that, even on element 14 with the bigger stuff. But realistically speaking, if I can get the subscribers that I need um, and be able to move forward, they'll be good. Like I said, if you want to really help me out, obviously I've set up a Patreon. I know I'm a very small creator, but um, it would be nice to see more subscribers come on, come on board. And yeah, um, I'm hoping that this year will be a good year. I try to get, you know, good full-time employment. 
but I'm basically realising that my industry claims they support people who are neurodiverse. Yeah, I find that they that they will cherry pick who they want to have. They won't let anyone be there. So, quite frankly, I don't believe what they say because my experience has been anything but positive. It's been very negative. And being a victim twice over, it doesn't make you feel very good. So, anyway, here's the 2024, and hopefully things move up from the channel. The next video um, on the channel should either be the assembly video of the Universal Timer, or the first in, li in the Live of Recreation Project videos. But until then, I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.